This is Obababatunde from SWAT. Why is it taking you so long to get to us? Hey guys, it's Lauren Yates from Rave It Up here. And today we're going to be having a chat over Zoom with musical theatre actor and drag artist Trevor Ashley, who is currently playing the Pharaoh in Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat playing here in Sydney at Capitol Theatre this week from the 11th of February. Go buy your tickets now if you haven't already. Let's hear all about the show now. Before we get into today's interview, we would like to give a shout out to our Patreons, Irene, Bev and Michael. If you haven't heard of Patreon before, it is a great way to support us and keep us running and improving. You pick a membership tier that suits you and your budget per month, And in return for supporting us, we'll give you behind the scenes content and free stuff. You don't have to give much either. You can be a part of our Patreons for as little as $4 a month. Just visit patreon.com forward slash rave it up. You can even donate through PayPal if you don't trust other sites. You can do so just through our email, raveituptv at gmail.com. Trevor, welcome to Rave It Up. It is a pleasure to finally have you on our show. How are you going today? Thank you for having me. I'm very good. It's very hot, but I'm very good. I know. I hope you have the air con on there. (laughs) I don't have air con. I'm like, oh. Get that fan on you. (laughs) Well, congratulations are in order, of course. If people don't know, you're playing the Pharaoh in Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Everyone buy their tickets now if you haven't already. Playing at Capitol Theatre from the 11th of February. So it's coming up quick. Can you tell us what was the whole audition process like for you? Or did they immediately go, yep, Trevor, we need... We need, him, we need him straight away. <laughs> um, do you know, it was funny because I wasn't going to actually audition for the show at all because I thought, I'm not right for this. It's normally sexy, Elvis, you know, can be shirtless, you know. And I thought, oh, well, I, I'm not going to come in. And then the producer texted me because I'm a good friend of his and he said, um, Lawrence wants to see you. So I'd worked with Lawrence Connor, the director, on Les Mis, um, all those years ago and almost 10 years ago, which is terrifying. Um, <laughs> but I'd done Les Mis for him and he said, can you get Trevor to come in and play an audition for Pharaoh? So in I went and um, and I sort of, I think, did two auditions and they were like, that's it. So um, so it was fun. It was just, uh, it was all very easy. Um, so it's been, it was lovely. And like, it was easy working with Lawrence again after you know, because we sort of had a shorthand because we'd um because we'd done Les Mis. So it was great. And I had a really um fun time. But of course, because I didn't do the Melbourne season, um I had trouble. It was weird for me because I went down just to do one week of Melbourne. Mm. So I didn't really know anybody because I'd been rehearsing by myself in a room with the dance captain and the resident choreographer. And so I was just like suddenly on stage with all these people and all these kids, I was like, oh, my gosh, what's going on? So <laughs> it was a little terrifying on that first show. Like coming into a new school, everyone already has all their friends. <laughs> exactly. And it's such a it's such a strange role as well because you don't come on till Act 2. So all of Act 1, you know, I'm sitting around by myself in my dressing room. Oh, going, I don't know anybody, but um, look, no, it's great. And now we've all been back in rehearsal, getting the kids together for uh, for Sydney. So it's wonderful. Well, it must feel really good to you anyway that they wanted you, literally like told you to come in an audition. And yeah. does that take a bit of pressure off yourself that you already knew the director? Yeah, I think I think it always does. When they ask you to come in or if they know that, that it's a possibility, I think you always sort of go in with, a, with more confidence and with more... Um, with an ease, I think. And so uh, I found that in the Laney's auditions too, um, that uh, they, it was just so easy. It felt really good. They, I felt more like a workshop than an audition. So that oh, was That's that was good. Nice. I always hear about the whole pressure of auditions and having to perform and everything. And But a lot of people I speak to are just like, just be yourself. You know, that's all that they want. You you know, if you don't get it, it, it's nothing personal. It might just be your, say, like, I don't know, an inch too short or something. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And look, it does sometimes come down to combinations of people. And I know that for um, when I was going for Lanius, of course, I I ended up reading with three different Madame Tenardiers. 
And then it was just Lara and I had such great chemistry that mm. that was it and we got the part. But everybody who was at those finals were incredible. So just needed that right combo, that chemistry. Right combo, exactly. <laughs> So did you already know a lot about the story already of Joseph and the amazing te Technicolor Dreamcoat? It's such a long yes, time. because I grew up with that show because I think they did the revival in the early 90s, I want to say something around there, when Jason Donovan played um, Joseph. And so I had the cassette and so I knew all the songs. So when this was coming back, I was like, my gosh, because I saw it here in Sydney at the Theatre Royal with Tina Arena and David Dixon and Michael Cormick as the Pharaoh. And um, we, and, and so I sort of knew the show very well. Um, and then when I got the part, I actually was over in London, so I got to go and see it over there and I got to see wow. this production and it's a beautiful production. I'm really proud of it. So is it hard to, since you've already seen other people play Pharaoh, kind of make it still your own and not copy them a little bit? <laughs> yeah, because most of the other people who have done it do play it like a sex symbol and I really don't. So <laughs> it's it's quite fun. I had a lot of fun putting, you know, my mark on this role because it is very, it's really funny. I've done a very comic take on it. Um, oh, so we not expect anything more from you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Look, I mean, you can't do it normal. Else. You can't do it straight. So, yeah. um, so it, it is. It's really funny. We have a a good giggle on stage, and um, you know, I've known Ewan and Paulini for so many years. So it's lovely to be there with them. Well, I was going to bring up Paulini too because we absolutely love her. She's been on the show a couple times, and we just get along like a house on fire. It's and she's so playing the narrator. Like, what's yeah. it like working? Like, obviously, I've I've chatted to her in interviews, but what's it like working with her? Does it even feel like work? Oh, it's so lovely. She's the most wonderful, and we've known each other for twenty five years. Wow. Um, we met at on the School Spectacular, so that's bringing that it back. So there you go. So we met in the late 90s doing school spec. So it, but this is the first time we've actually been on stage together, together. So I'm having a ball with her. We just, we get on so well and, and she's just heaven. So I'm excited that, um, you know, that we're both Sydney girls. So we're both, both home now and get to do it here. Yeah, I love that. And how much rehearsal time have you guys had? Are you all ready now, ready for the eleventh? Yeah, well, we've got we've got a few more days now to take the children, um, each team of children into the show. Yep. So there are four sets of eight kids, and if you've not if you've seen the show before, often it's like a school choir, and they're sort of on the sides, and they're not really part of it. Mm. Um, but in this production, it's absolutely wonderful. The kids are integral to the show and they are they play different roles they dance they backflip they're amazing so um so each set of kids gets to tech uh so it's a um it'll be fun this next few days and i'll just pop in and do my little number and go and sit in my dressing room <laughs> <laughs> easy peasy job done and dusted it is it's so easy so for you personally, has it been a couple of weeks or are we talking like several months of rehearsal? Oh, um, no, I think. It's more for other yeah, people. When I went into the show in Melbourne, I'd had about 10 hours. That's all. And then and, you're bringing it now. I had to do it. So now I've had like a week. So that's been fine. Everything professional. Good. You don't need more. <laughs> I know. And I've done it now. I've done it eight times in Melbourne. So I feel like, oh, I'm ready. I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I'm ready to go out on stage. <laughs> Just need to get in the zone and then get out there. <laughs> get in the makeup. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, that was something I was going to bring up because there's a lot involved in getting ready that I'm probably sure a lot of our audience don't even realise. And, it, you know, we're not even talking about your character. I'm just talking about anybody in musical theatre. You know, you've got make sure you do your hair, your makeup. There's fancy costumes, even preparing your voice as well and Maybe yeah. some dance moves. How long does it take you to get ready for this show in particular? This one's quite quick for me because normally I've I've been in something a lot more elaborate yeah. in terms yeah. of, you know, <laughs> it the turn blade took a lot longer, you know. Um yeah. so I think 
for this, I it, it doesn't take long. I, I do my makeup. It's actually the costume's the hardest bit to get into because there's several layers of things to keep everything where it should be. So it's actually just getting all the layers and levers and bits right so as the costume stays how it should. But I've gotten used to that now. But, uh, yeah, so it takes a bit, but... You know, I do my makeup quickly. I'm old hand, it's too much makeup. So um, this was a nice Cleopatra eye. So I was like, easy, I can do that. Um, so, yeah, no, it, it's good. But, you know, yeah, we do warm up. You do have to really prepare. And they all have it a lot harder than me in this show because they're all on. Paulini's on the whole night. She barely mm. leaves the stage. So, um it's a big show for her and a big show for Ewan um, and for the children because they're basically on at the beginning and leave at the end. So it's um, it's it's a big show for the kids. So, But everyone's wonderful. The cast are lovely and everyone's so talented. I'm really excited to show Sydney this show. I can't wait to see it too. I already got my tickets ready to come. <laughs> Good. Talking about that costume too, you said there's heaps of layers and everything. Is it quite heavy as well? Because it kind of looks like it does in the images. But... It, it, it is. It's like all of the, the skirt and the um and all the bits and pieces of tabard and everything and then all of the sort of um buckles and things that come with it and my cape. So there's quite a lot involved. Um, but I love it now. I've gotten used to it. It just needed a, you know, a couple of shows, but it's um yeah, it's heavy and it's big and I've got a leotard underneath to keep myself nice because it's got little straps on the side. So yeah, but there's just like lots of things you have to sort of do to get into it. Yeah, that doesn't sound good for Sydney Summers. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm glad the theatre's air-conditioned. Yes. <laughs> Even if my house so. isn't, I'm glad the theatre is. <laughs> so the life of a stage performer, you know, I, I wanted to go into that a little bit more. You finish late, you know, sometimes you have more than one show in a day as well. How do you look after yourself in particular, whether that's, you know, we're talking about resting your voice, eating right, sleeping, if you can even get any sleep with all the work you do? <laughs> a lot of it is just, it, it, is, it is honestly having enough rest and having enough vocal rest. I find often, I mean, this role is really good because for me, it's just singing, so it's okay. But I know that like, lame as I yelled so much and I had to do such a character voice and um, so much raspiness in it that it was extremely difficult to actually have um actually keep momentum and 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 I did fail like after about a year of doing it it was you know I was it was pretty bad so it it, it does take a lot and I think you know someone like Paulini who's got you know so much singing a night in this show uh means that you know it's a tough it's a it's a really tough thing and you do just have to get enough rest and and try and be, you know, as kind to yourself as you can. Yeah, absolutely. Do you take, like, say, a whole day off for vocal rest or are we just talking? Uh, it, it depends on what, what I need. I mean, often I'm, uh, if I have a really good sleep and don't speak for, say, 12 hours, I'm okay. Um, but sometimes from Sunday night through to Tuesday night, you know, or Wednesday show, you can have to be completely silent so that would be interesting <laughs> it's hard yeah i can only imagine messaging yeah, everything yeah. <laughs> and that's world pride while we're opening so i'm like i want to go and do things and see things when i've got to be when i'm doing eight shows a week yeah yeah you got to make sure you're focused and you're not going to let all the uh, fans down if you lose your voice yeah no i've got to be fabulous so yeah and do you have any, like, really cool pre-show rituals that you can share with us as well? No, I'm so boring. I go in, I listen to music and do my makeup. Pump yourself up. Yeah, I sort of get into it that way. For me, it's just focusing on what I'm about to do. And I think because this show, as I say, I didn't have all the rehearsal in the world, that um, uh, it's great now because I feel I feel more comfortable and I, I know it much better than I did the first day I was thrown onto the stage and they went you'll be right I'm like ah <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought at one point 
because in my tech rehearsals they hadn't used fire. And so I'm sitting there on my throne and I I was sitting and I was like, something's on fire, something's on fire. And I was looking at the child next to me and I looked, I could kind of look behind. I was like, oh, it's a thing. Like they've got big, <laughs> big giant fire props. I went, oh, okay. You're like, I'm am I really going to I'm, I'm heating up. <laughs> no one had told me there was fire, so there you go. Oh, that's really cool though. And now you know people as well. You now I know. Like that, that was my first show and I was like, oh, oh okay. Up. Great, they're carrying fire on. Great, okay, now I know. This. Totally normal. Some kids carrying fire. Yeah. Well, you know, it wasn't you. You weren't literally on fire. That's good. No, it wasn't me and it wasn't the set, so that was great. <laughs> Fingers crossed that never happens. <laughs> <Don't Right. you. laughs> so you've played some really cool, like, roles over your career as well. I, I would be here literally all day listing them. I had a really great time doing some research on you, but you know, just think things like Jesus Christ Superstar and we're talking about Hairspray, which you were talking about before. And even in your own like tribute show of Liza Minnelli, what do you have more fun doing? Is it your own kind of shows, like maybe Body Bag or kind of having those already established roles like Joseph and you being you know, the favorite? I feel lucky that I've uh you know, the past sort of 16 years, I've gotten the fire alarm going off. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure it's a false alarm. Yeah. I'm going to look out the window. Hang on a moment. Yeah, yes. Sorry. Make sure you're okay. Yeah, but nobody seems to be r- rushing. So, yeah, oh, we were sorry, talking so about your different roles. roles. Yes. Look, I I've enjoy... It all. <laughs> I enjoy all versions of of working and I feel really glad that I've gotten to do my own work and my own parodies and all of that sort of stuff as well as play in some of you know the big musicals and for me that's what I really love I love to to be able to do all the different styles of roles and I like to be able to play drag roles I've played non-drag roles so I feel like for me it's um it's really exciting to to have been able to do both of those things here come the fire trucks um so from doing my research on you it seems like you've always been you know your your dream has always been somewhere in the arts because you did study theater and music and drama and played in school bands and even began writing your own you know orchestrations and arrangements so was there any other career that you actually had in mind as well or maybe like a plan b or did your parents want you to have one (laughs) my parents wanted me to finish high school i didn't want to finish um but mum and dad said, you've got to finish, you've got to finish. And actually it was a great thing that I did um, finish high school because it was just, um, it was just really amazing the things and the opportunities I got from those last couple of years of high school, whether it was doing School Spectacular, school spectacular playing in the bands, going overseas. I went to America in wow. my, in year 12 with the um, state school's all-star big band. So I did that. I think it's just been a, a phenomenal, it was amazing to finish that off. But then I never, my parents wanted me to go and do NIDA or Whopper or something like that. And I said, look, I want a year off and I want to see if I get any work. And if I get any work, then I'm not going to, um, then I'm not going to go to, Whopper and, and NIDA or try out. I'm just going to keep going. Yeah. And I mean, it sort of paid off for me. I, I did more by just being a part of the industry and doing my own cabaret shows and becoming a drag queen and all of those things that, um, that really um, made it interesting, you know, a way to start a career. But I was always disappointed because I'd get really close to different musicals um, as you know, in my early 20s, but I'd never quite get them. Yeah. And I'd always get called back and I'd always end up, you know, right down to the end and then wouldn't get the gig. So I feel lucky, though, that I, I got to do as many things as I have. And it was literally, this was the only thing I ever knew that I was going to do. When I was a child, I was obsessed with theatre, I was obsessed with musicals. I'd go and see absolutely everything. 
and my mother and father were really supportive of me doing that so they always said you know at least if I got my high school certificate that I could go back and be a te music teacher or something like that and I was like it's not gonna happen <laughs> Never doing it. absolutely not and even those auditions even the ones you didn't actually get the roles you know you still got to look at it as a great opportunity you met all those people they know who you were yeah. And then, you know, maybe some of those people are still the ones calling you up today to go, hey, come audition. Well, it's funny, like the, the same, you know, casting directors, you know, you, you met, met everybody and it's just, um, yeah, I, I think that was, the, that was the amazing thing. And I met so many wonderful people in the industry and was lucky that, you know, I really immersed myself in it. So when I finally did get Priscilla, it was like, oh, wow, it was my first big show. So it was, you know, it was wonderful. And all uphill from there. like. Well, you know, up and going. down, COVID wasn't great. So, no, uh, that's all right. We won't get into that. No. <laughs> so before we finish up today, Trevor, do you have any advice for our audience who might want to follow their dreams of becoming a musical theatre actor or a drag queen or anything of the lovely things that you do? I think the, the main thing is you just have to believe in yourself and learn as much as you can and respect the people that have come before you. I was a big fan of so many different people and that I've now ended up calling my friends uh, who I got to see on stage when I was younger. And I think the thing is, uh, believe in yourself, but also respect those who have come before you because there's a wealth of experience of people who have. So I always think that, um, Certainly, and not just like American performers, like know who your Australian music theatre stars are and, and drag performers and local drag performers um, because, you know, they've had amazing careers. Yeah, use them as some mentors. Exactly. Learn from their recipes, as they say. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, then you don't have to make the mistakes yourself. That's always helpful. Absolutely. <laughs> little less mistakes. <laughs> And as a closing statement today as well, Trevor, and what's probably the most important question here on Rave It Up, knowing what you know now, what would you tell your 14-year-old self? It's okay that you're gay and your career is not going to go the way that you think it's going to go, but keep the dreams there because they will all happen. Yeah, and it's just going to get better. It was better yeah. than you thought, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> And before we go, if our audience want to find out what you're up to in the future and go buy tickets, where should we go? Always to www.trevorashley.com.au. Nice and easy. Everything's up there and it's yes. a terrific website too. So, yes. <laughs> And again, guys, 11th of February, Capitol Theatre. Go buy your tickets for Joseph now to check out Trevor as Pharaoh. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the show today, Trevor. I Thank know you're you. a really sorry busy about person. The fire alarms and the, oh. <laughs> so you're so busy and so stressed, even the fire alarms going off and you're still yeah. doing it. <laughs> well, you're welcome on the show anytime, okay? So keep in touch and come back on the show to chat about anything in the future. Thank you very much. No, you're very welcome. Well, I hope you all enjoy today's interview. If you'd like to check out any of our other interviews, please visit our website, raveituptv.com. And while you're there, please also check out our two books, one behind me called Knowing What I Know Now, as well as a mini ebook that I wrote called Staying Strong, Finding Inner Peace During Hard Times. And make sure to please tell your friends about Rave It Up. But for now, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.